Welcome to the channel. Um, what we're going to be doing on this channel, uh, for this first video we're going to be talking about intervals and how to find any chord on the guitar. But what we're going to be doing on this channel is we're going to be talking about everything guitar and guitar related. When people first start playing guitar, they get in the habit of getting into, um, they're called the cowboy chords, and they get in the habit of playing, you know, the open chords. And what you're hearing here is my Kemper. I'm going through an FRFR using a head rush right here. And I'm running straight out into the room mics. I am not running this into the computer um, direct. So you're hearing basically what I'm hearing. And hopefully it sounds good on your side. So understanding intervals. Uh, you do have to have a little bit of knowledge about the guitar as far as where the notes are, uh, especially on, we'll say, the first two strings, um, that will help kind of get you up and running. And when I explain intervals, I'm also going to show some uh, demonstrations on the piano, which don't mind the books on the piano, but I'm going to show some uh, demonstrations on the piano to kind of give you an idea of how it all works and how it relates. Um, understanding theory, in my opinion, is so much easier on a piano than it is on a guitar. Uh, piano is laid out in front of you and it doesn't change. Um, if you follow the major scale and you start at C, it continues on the same exact pattern all the way across the piano. Uh, it's very linear to where a guitar doesn't work that way. Um, you have to move your positions around and you got to play intervals in different places. Uh, to, to make it work, especially when you're uh, looking for chord structure. Uh, we're going to do everything. We're going to start on the key of C uh, because when you see on the piano, uh, the key of C, there's only white notes. There's no black notes. We start on C and we'll go um, from C to D is one whole step. From D to E is a whole step. E to F is a half step. F to G, whole step. G to A, whole step. A to B, whole step. B to C, half step. If you do that on guitar, it follows kind of the same pattern. Um, as far as, it follows the pattern of the major scale. Of course, if you're going um, uh, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. But when you're looking for a chord, if you play a C on a piano and you're playing in the root position, it's the same everywhere on the piano. It does not change. Uh, you have the root position, the first position, and the second position, which are called uh, inversions. doesn't follow the same principle on a guitar. Uh, everybody knows how to play a C chord. And of course, you're, you know, your root, and you're playing the five strings with your open strings and your fretted strings. In the key of C, you find your C here, and of course, you know, you get E, F, G, A, B, half step, C, your major scale. If you want to play a C chord, you can play this, of course, but a chord's only made for three notes, hence the triad. So if we only want to play three notes, and a lot of jazz guys will do this, they'll only play three or four notes at a time. You don't see a lot of jazz guys, you know, strumming out full chords and so on. Because sometimes in the composition of music, you have so much going on, that can actually be too much and too muddy. So you simplify it. But you still play your root third and fifth usually, so you can hear the major or minor tonality of the chord. So if we're playing a C, and we start at C, if we go, uh, and we're talking about intervals now. So in a major scale, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're not so much talking about half steps and whole steps. You have seven notes in a scale, eighth note is your octave. So if we do one, two, three, and the three brings us up to the E, um, that is our third, all right? But we very well can't play root and third on the same note. So what we have to do is find the third on the next string down. So if you find your root 
then you go down one string and back one fret, that is always your major third. Always. It doesn't matter where you go, that is always your major third. Of course, until you get here, because here we have a um, we have a tuning change right here. But no matter where you're going here on the first three strings, that's always a major third. So knowing that, you're halfway to building your chord. So we have a root, a third, and a fifth. That's what denotes a chord. So if we go back to C, and we have our third. Well, if we follow our major pattern, one, two, three, four, five. That's our fifth. So if you find your root, you go down one and up two. That's always your fifth. Always. Always your fifth. Doesn't matter where you move it. Okay, but we can't very well play the fifth here because we got to play the third here at the seventh fret on the A string. So we can't have the fifth here. So now we've got to find a fifth on this string, which is right here. So playing the C, your third, and your fifth. That's your C chord. That is the same exact chord as that. Now this, again, works true until you cross these strings, you have to change position a little bit, but if we move everything, if we move everything to, uh, let's say D, that is our D chord. That's a D major chord. Okay, now that you understand, it takes three notes to make a chord, and uh, this is your root, this is C, our third's here, always gonna be there, and then our fifth is always here. If we take the third, and we move that down a half a step. Now, and we play the same root minor third, fifth. Now we have a C minor. You can hear the, it kind of has a sadder sound to it. Major, happier sound, minor. Sadder sound. And again, it works the same way anywhere. If we go to E, and we're playing E major, Lower the third, a half step, E minor. So now that you've kind of got an ideal of intervals, and like I said, we're basing all this off of our major pattern. Basing everything off of that major scale. I hear a odd noise. Anyway. Uh, so now, if you understand your major scale and your intervals, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, C to C, octave, all right? And of course it repeats, it keeps going over and over until you, you know, eventually run out of frets and strings. If you know the intervals of the scale, major or minor, you can literally find any chord on the guitar. Let's do, um, give you a, a better idea. Let's do D. Uh, let's D. Now we're going to start here, and of course your major scale, if this is my root, no matter where your root is, your major scale starts there and repeats the same pattern. Right there, because we have the difference in the tuning, we have to shift up, and it repeats the pattern, and it just goes on and on and on again forever until you run out of frets or strings. So if we go to the D, okay, D is our root. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so we have found our nine notes that we're gonna be working with for this chord. So if we're gonna play a D9, there's our third, minor third, because we move that down a half step, major third. All right, so now we necessarily, since we're having a third, because the third is what gives the, the chord its color. Thirds, sevens, and nines. Fifth is a perfect fifth. It really doesn't give a chord a lot of color. Um, it's just kind of, it's a perfect harmony over the top. Doesn't give it color. If you listen to this, this is with the a D with a fifth, but listen to the D with a third, minor third. So you can definitely hear the color as opposed to a perfect fifth. Um, so knowing that, if we want to find a D9 
and we use our intervals on our scale and we go back and then we know this is our root this is the D note this is our root so now we want a third so we take the third we find it on the next string down there's our third now we got uh, we don't need a fifth because we're going to add a seventh on top of this so one two three four five six seven but because we're going to play a D9, we're going to flat the 7. Take it down a half step. There's our 7th. There's our major 7th. There's our minor 7th. Same ways it works as the uh, on the 3rd. You have major 3rd, minor 3rd. And I'm going to show you, and, and hopefully this is going to click here in a minute. So there's our, our minor 7. Now we've got to add a 9 to it. So we go back to our D, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's the note we need. We gotta find it on the next string down because we're using this string for our seventh. So we know that this is our nine now. So we have our root, our third, our seventh, and our nine, D9. If you wanna play a D9 sharp, take the ninth, raise it a half step. D9 sharp, huge chords and blues and jazz and so on. So without knowing really the theory behind everything and without even knowing what the notes are that make up the chord, you understand how to find a chord. You can find it strictly off the intervals. Um, now there's more to it than that because you've got to understand the theory behind it too at one point. What makes it major, what makes it minor, uh, which is you know moving your third like I said, but then you have major seven, you have minor, seven, uh, minor sevens. Um, remember what I said, we're playing the third, we have the minor seven, if we major the seven, it gives it a much happier sound, even with that, even with that uh, major third, it gives it, a, it lifts the sound a little bit. Uh, so we have our root, we have our fifth, down, up to, perfect fifth. Here we're running our major seven, right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's our major seven, right there. So we're, um, and you can just play that but it sounds a little empty to me until we add the third. That third is what gives us that, that really strong major pull. We got a major seventh and a major third. You could actually augment the fifth. Augment is you're going up a half step. Just find the intervals, learn your major scale, because once you learn your major scale, you can find any chord, even every minor chord, just by moving your intervals around. So your major scale, and we're going to go to A this time, one, two, three. So it's, uh, major scale would be a five, seven, nine, five, seven, nine, on those first two strings to start the major scale. Then here, you're going to go to a six, seven, nine, six, seven, nine. And you, you see the patterns, the repeating patterns. Um, so, uh, and then you're going to switch to 7, 9, 10, 7, 9, 10. You always got that half step shift because of the uh, tuning right here. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something off of it. Um, I got a lot of videos coming up. Um, I got a couple of reviews coming up. Uh, one of them is going to be on this guitar here. I never really found a good review on this guitar anywhere on the internet. So I am going to do one on my Ibanez. Absolutely love this guitar. Uh, I am a huge Eddie Van Halen Wolfgang fan. And I'm actually going to review my 1996 pre-patent EVH Wolfgang, the absolute greatest guitar I've ever owned. The thing is a f***ing tank. And um, I still gig with it regularly. It, it is an absolute beast of a guitar. And in my opinion, one of the greatest guitars ever made. So we got a lot of stuff that we're going to be touching base on. So I hope you enjoyed the, uh, um, the lesson on intervals. Um, if I need to dive deeper into that, I absolutely will. Please subscribe to the channel, and I will see you soon.